I was good that I didn't even stay in the cage for, for the decision, do you know what I mean? Because I got beat, I got tapped out, beat, I beat off the better guy. Crying, I was just couldn't believe it, do you know what I mean? And uh, Dana came in, he said, look, he said, you're still going to get your shot. He said, it was a great fight, man. He just sort of like, gave us a pat on the back and said, look, everything's going to be all right, do you know what I mean? What are all these characters like? In, have you met them all, McGregor's? And the yeah, Z they're all brothers. sound. They're Honestly, you meet anyone in the gym, especially an MMA gym. Mm -hmm. An MMA gym, you don't get many dickheads. You've been there for a while. You've been humbled. You have yeah. been, you know what I mean? You've been tied up by some little skinny guy and he's you're only alive now because he let go. Yeah. It's very humble and that. And I was like, oh, I used to do this. They were like, go away. I was <laughs> like, oh, this, like, I can fight me. They were like, nah. And I was like, no, it's true. It's true. <laughs> skill set for skill set, I'd smash him. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but he was better, loads better at me than Jiu-Jitsu though. Do you know what I mean? But I feel like my wrestling was good enough. I didn't even have to go to the floor with him in the third round. Mm -hmm. I just felt him crumble in front of me because he couldn't get me tucked down. I thought, right, I'm going to knock you out now. I went on a, on a boat trip, you know, with Donald Cerrone and oh, we yeah. were on like, because uh, Donald, Donald he fetches all his toys to the PI, you know, like he's always going out on his motorbikes or he's got a, a boat and we're going like wakeboarding on his boat and the guy who was there and that. And all yeah. there was loads of these like, you know, Daniel Rodriguez, all we were just, mental, we were just going about the, the lakes in Vegas on, on a boat wakeboarding and stuff. You've got to the pinnacle of, of the world in terms of this sport. Um, did your life change and what was it like actually getting a deal with the UFC? Okay mate, so today we are joined by Davey Grant, so pro MMA nice fighter. Mate, how long's it been? Trying to get you on this podcast. Ah, I yeah, know, fucking hell. It's been, been a while, mate. Am I allowed to swear? Ah, you're allowed oh, yeah, to swear. Yeah, sorry, mate. I'm terrible <laughs> for doing that, you know. No, it's all right. Honest to God, I just seem to drop swear words in all the time. Obviously, everyone knows who's in the MMA or the UFC, know who you are. Y Thanks. Your name's been around. A uh, very respected bloke and fighter. Um, but taking it, you know, right back to sort of the beginning, because not every lad grows up and gets into scraps and enjoys it. I mean, yeah. me for one, mate, can't think of that worse than getting digged in the head. <laughs> um, so trying to try and actually do this as a discipline and a business and a, and a job is another level, mate. How did you get into fighting? Uh, I mean, I think I was about, when I got into, I, st I tried karate first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, didn't go to the best. I, like, I, I, I got to the point where we started sparring and the gym that I was at, I remember this black belt woman, I don't think she liked me. I was only about eight years old and she used to proper beat me up bad, you know, in sparring. <laughs> and uh, looking back, I was probably going too hard and he probably thought, oh, they were teaching me a lesson. Right. And I, I used to get scared to go in, but I was only eight. Right, do you know what I mean? Course. And I, I was thinking, hey, I'm nowhere near tough enough for this karate stuff. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like the gloves were littler than the ones we wear for the UFC. Do you know what I mean? I remember getting bus nose and, and coming home and just thinking, I'm not going back there. That's why why did you get into that though? What, why karate? Did I don't you know. I probably could watch the karate kid. I don't know. Nah, my mum my, my and dad never pushed me into anything. Right. Uh, yeah. My dad's dad, so my granddad, he was like, Really wanted my dad to do like lots of sport and like he really pushed him into football. Loves football, my granddad. Big Sunderland fan he is. Is he? Yeah. Right and uh, so he was to push my dad in, so my dad didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So my dad didn't do anything like that with me. He just sort of let me like pay my own way. Mm -hmm. But I would have probably liked it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Weird how it works. Yeah, like, like so, because I, I love getting pushed into things and and like anything to do with sports. That's mm -hmm. all I used to do when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Just sports. You know what I mean? No matter what it was, it was more football than anything else. Mm -hmm. If I was any good at football, I would have been a footballer, not a fighter. Do you know what I mean? Ah, I just wasn't I good enough. Just so didn't you, make the cut. From the from the obviously doing karate, did you? Again, you, you're on it yet, so it's it's going to be very hard to yeah. determine if you're good or not, really. But. Did you did your dad or mum then see actually you know what he's got a bit of something about him like he nah, wants to do this no definitely not definitely not and it was about I'll, I'll have been about thirteen maybe fourteen I think fourteen when my dad started training because one one of his friends was doing it back in like the the, the early days got probably going back to like two thousand mm -hmm. uh. I think it would have been about 2000, maybe it's like, maybe it's in the, even 98, 99, and one of his friends started doing it. One of his friends had a kickboxing gym. Right. And he just asked me to go along for fitness. I'd have been about 14 at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I went, and mm -hmm. just just for the crack with my dad, really, just something to do, do you know what I mean? And and then my dad was like, yeah, you got somebody, you know, I didn't believe him, to mm -hmm. be honest. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to tell. But like all the people I'm going with are lo loads more experienced than me. And... Uh, Everyone was loads bigger than me as well. I'm mm. only slight myself. Do you know what I mean? And like my dad's friend, he was a heavyweight, and I and I used to go and I used to have to spar with all them because we didn't really look at weight categories back in the day. It was just like another spam partner. It didn't yeah, matter yeah, who yeah, it was. It was it was weird how it is. It's not like it is now. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I used to get beat up bad. <laughs> Wait, do you know when this when they said like you had something about you though? What is that something? I haven't got a clue. Honest, do I don't you know. know. I, mean? I think it was probably probably because like when I'm getting beat up, I don't realize that these 
I'll probably the people are probably having to beat me up because I, I'm trying to take the heads off. Do you know what I mean? Oh. I think I'll have probably been a bit of head the ball when oh, I was a yeah, young yeah, and yeah. no looking back now I'm thinking these probably they, they would probably just try and teach me a lesson like look if you try and go out on me but I was like I didn't know it was like oh we sparring okay right well then let's go <laughs> do you know what I mean? We What's happening guys? I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. If you are, please hit that like, hit the subscribe button and press the notification bell so you don't miss another episode. Were you an angry kid or were you nah, just competitive? No, not angry in the slightest. Mm -hmm. Very, very competitive. Mm -hmm. Like if you said to me now we're going to play rock, paper, scissors, I would get nervous that I didn't win. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> really? And I'd be trying to second guess, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm that competitive. Uh -huh. And I always have been. Anything I do, uh -huh. um, I'm, I'm, I'm very much about that sort of, uh, that, that win and drive, do you know what I mean? Where everyone thinks I'm a bad loser. I'm not. I'm not a bad loser at all. I just hate losing. Aye. Do you know what I mean? But there's a difference. You know what I mean? I wouldn't start blaming, I don't know, anything if I did lose. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, you I, just I, want to win yes, so much. Yes, it's different. It's different. I, mean, I don't think, I feel like I'm a good loser. I just don't like it. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just always been a part of my character. I don't know. What were you like in school growing up? We well, did you used to fight in school and all that. Yeah, I mean, where where I came from. So I came from like a little little village, Toronto, and it was just like like anything. We were just rough little boys, you know what I mean, fighting on all the time. My dad again actually saw. He said, he seen. He was looking out the window one one day, and uh, there was these older kids bullying me, and, and he thought he's just gonna gonna watch and like not come out and just see how I handle myself. Do you know what I mean? And he said, I think I think I can't remember what it was, but this might have been a time when he like he, he thought he, he's like, all right, it's a fight in this. And the kids were trying to take my jacket off us or something like that. Do you know what I mean? And these are like kids like two foot bigger than me. And he said, you just started swinging at them and they were like, didn't know what to do with you. Do you know what I mean? He always tells us that story. And he said, I was thinking, God, he's a nutter old David. Like, do you know what I mean? That's what he used to say about it. So it was maybe sort of inbuilt in us. I don't know. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It was, uh, it was crazy, but I was... When I lived in Toronto, it was all, we were all like, none of us had any money. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It was just a little, just a, just a village. It wasn't a, like a council estate, but it was just a little quiet village. And I didn't know anything about like, uh, I don't know, even like sports makes and things like that. You know, like, yeah, we yeah, weren't bothered what type of trainers we were. No one cared. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then my mum and dad broke up and then we moved to Darlow. And then when we started living in Dalton, uh, everyone was like wearing like Nike and, and things like that. So I'd moved over. I was from somewhere totally different. Maybe probably talked a little bit different. Didn't yeah. realize it back then. No, do you know what I mean? And uh, didn't wear the right stuff. And so like people used to try and bully me. So I used to, so everyone was like really nasty. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, all right, so that's how it is over here, right? Okay. So we just nasty to each other. And then I used to beat them up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then, but it, and then I took it the total wrong way. Yeah. Then I would like beat people up for not agreeing with me. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I, I was like, I, I, I did. I, 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 I like, it just sort of like, it, it, it was a stage in my life where it it was like, right, everyone's nasty. So, okay then, right, I'll be the nasty How guy. How old were you then, 14, 15? No, eight. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I was like right. eight, nine years old. Fucking hell, so you beating uh, people up with eight-year-old. Yeah, so like, um, so the, but then, then I, I, honestly, in all honesty, I probably took it to, totally the wrong way and I ended up being a dickhead. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, not proud of how, how I used to be at all, but like I said, I was a kid, I didn't know yeah, anything. But all these people were trying to bully me, so I was just like, right, oh, then fight fire with fire. But then I wouldn't do it just on the people who were bullying me, I'd do it on everyone. Yeah. Do you know what when I mean? You, when, you, when you got to 14, 15, when you got in the kickboxing gym and all that, did you carry that with you? No. Like that dickhead mentality? See, before then... I realized that this is no way to go about life. So I maybe, I would have probably been about 13. And I started, I, I thought this is, I, from now on, I thought, look, this is not the way to be. I thought, I, I was like, I don't know, probably losing friends and like, just, I could just see that it, was, it wasn't the right way, you know, like just maybe growing up, maturing a bit. Yeah. And then I thought from now on, I'm just going to be really nice to everyone until they give me a reason not to be. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And my life just got 10 times better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a good model. So, I've got like, isn't it? yeah, so like I, every, everything just started to get lots better and uh, and like I had loads more friends and I wasn't getting into trouble as much. And, like I still would because like I was still the type of person who wouldn't back down to anyone. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And funnily enough, I used to hate people bullying people even though I used to sort of do it myself, I would say that I did definitely used to bully people. I didn't really know, though that was more when I was like, just thinking that that's how, how people are. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but a lot of my friends, because in school I was pretty, I'd say I was pretty intelligent. You know, I used to be in the top sets for everything. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of my friends are like, usually you don't, the cleverer guys are not as rough. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? They're the lads in the stupid class, they're, they're a bit more of the bullies, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I used to end up falling out with the bullies over a lot of things where they used to like, 
either try and bully people who I was friends with or whatever, do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, or, or just the fact that, I don't know, maybe I was cheeky. I don't know, there's probably a lot of different factors in it. Do you know what I mean? What did you want to do at that age, like when you were leaving school? Footballer. Is All I wanted want to, to be, wait, probably by the time I left school, I realised, look, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You know when you don't get picked up off a top club, but like, yeah. I didn't get picked up at any club. I never got scouted by anyone. Do you know what I mean? It was like, oh, that's gone. Do you know what I mean? No, when, you're, when you're young, that's all you say. I just want to be a footballer. But if you want, you know, like, because I never wanted to be a footballer, really. I mean, when I was a Ben, maybe. But when uh, I got like school, it never really even entered my head. Yeah. But when you want to be something so bad or you, you've got a dream and you think, I'm not fucking good enough, mm. how do you how do you mentally cope with that? Like, what did you think? I'm, gonna, I'm yeah. trying to get into college. Like, how right, did you... uh, yeah, I just, I, I wanted to do something in sports. So I went to college and I did like sports science mm -hmm. and uh, I, I wanted to do something like that. And that never really worked out either. I wasn't, oh, no, it is. I wasn't the type of person who learned well in classrooms. You know, honest, I was really, really bright and intelligent, mm -hmm. even in school up until the point where you really had to try. You know what I mean? Like anything naturally, I was really good at. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you had to start doing coursework and putting more effort in, it wasn't for me. I used mm -hmm. to hate like sitting in the classrooms. I don't learn well like that. Yeah, that's Do you know what I mean? Enough. And then it was the same in college and like doing assignments and things like that. And I'm more of a like just a hands-on guy. Mm -hmm. I'll learn a lot better if I'm just doing things. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just like the way the school system is, it's a bit dated, isn't it? You oh, know, it it's is. like, it it's, it, it's not it's not for everyone. They just want to try and create like work around stone needs, you know, like it's like, it's funny you say that, you know, about the school system being dated and kind of how you learn. And I, and I guess we've all got our own way of learning, but you've clearly demonstrated that, obviously, on the mats, and you yeah. are a hands-on guy, do you know what yeah. I mean? When did you sort of get introduced to MMA properly? So that was what that would have been when I was about 14. It was a kickboxing gym I went yeah. to, but some of the guys were doing MMA. Right, okay. And then I remember just rolling about with a few of the guys who were a lot older than me, a lot more experienced than me. And my dad must have think, oh, he's doing good against him. Because I was like even sometimes tapping these guys and I didn't even know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But I still, still, I, I, I didn't realise. I, I just thought I'm getting beat up. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then Did I, you have a love for it when you were doing it? Yeah, just like sort of just, yeah, just thrived for it. Do you know what I mean? It was, uh, and then I ended up having my first fight in like 2001, I think. Mm hmm was it 2001 or 2002? First grappling competition, 2001. Mm -hmm. And first fight in 2002. How did they go? Uh, grappling competition. First one came... I wouldn't like the consolation prize. Absolutely gutted. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I wouldn't... I think I might have won one after that. I can't remember, you know. Mm -hmm. It was... Uh, yeah, it was a long time ago, and I, I remember once sitting there crying for about an hour because I lost a match. Did you get support though off your parents? And yeah, your... like me dad like wanted us to do it, and like we were going with his friends who were already doing it. Right, do you know I what I mean? I... And they were like loads better than me. They were like winning things and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I was just like I, I didn't. I was still just just young. Didn't really know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Does does like at that age? Because when I was at that age, I was thinking about, like, do I go to college or go to uni? How am mm. I going to make money? Some, I had some mates go in the army. Some were going straight and, like, becoming joiners yeah. or whatever. And then I was thinking, how how do I, how am I going to make some money out of this? Obviously, there's not there's not much money in MMA. No. Probably it was just for the all, unless you're one of the top. purely for the so, risk of it. So, and that's all it was. Yeah. Were, you, were you not even thinking about what no, am I going to do for a living not. at that stage? Definitely not. I was like, and then I, I just, when I left school, I st after I did my MMA fight... I got beat and it put me right off. Mm -hmm. I, like, I'm, I was thinking, what's the point? I'm, I'm no good at this. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then I literally, from 15 till 19, 20, maybe, hardly in the gym. Mm -hmm. I was doing maybe a little bit of weights here and there. Maybe go, the, go to the MMA gym once every, sometimes it'd be months mm -hmm. and I wouldn't just, I, w I wouldn't go. And because uh, I just thought, oh, well, I'm no good at this. And I remember I was about 19, and my dad was saying, Look, you need to get back in the fight, and you're good at it. Would you just do something with it? And I was like, ah, I'm too old for that, dad. <laughs> do you know ah, what I mean? Yeah, Thinking yeah, like yeah. 19, you think you know everything, don't you? Do, do you think you're probably lacking a bit of self belief, though? Probably, at yeah. At the time, like. Just didn't seem like. Because you're, you're, you're not too old at all, are you? When no, you're that age, like... not at all. But I was, I, I was sort of thinking. Well, oh, what about all these kids who've boxed since they were five-year-old? And what about all the all the people who've stuck in it their whole entire life when I hadn't really, do you know what I mean? I'd like just had spells of it, yeah, do you know what I mean? I and I really that, like... didn't think that, that I'd be able to. I was just thinking that nah, I'd be just too too sort of mainstream. And do, and then I just started doing it again because my mates all started watching it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and like I say, back in the day, I used to be a bit of a knobhead known for running about fighting all the time. Then when I was older, 
when my mates started watching it, I was like, oh, I used to do this. They were like, go away. I was like, no, this, like, I can fight me. They were like, nah. And I was like, no, it's true. It's true. Do you know what I mean? And, but I don't it's come true. across as a fighter at all. Uh, and honest, even my wife. Uh, you don't like. Even don't my wife was like, look, you've got nothing to prove. You know what I mean? I was like, no, I'll go and have a fight and we'll all come and watch and it'll be a good night out. Do you know what I mean? I said, like, uh, everyone was like thinking I was just like, just going to go in there and get beat up. She was like, look, don't do it. I'm like, honest. Trust us, I'm yeah, good at it. Yeah. And then I went and did it, had a fight one, and then just never looked back. Just started, sort of like, got the love back for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and just yeah just kept on doing was it was your diet and everything on point anywhere naturally or were you no, just like eating really. shit training I mean, a bit I've, I've, honestly I've always been like I've never really struggled with my weight my full life uh, I tend to Back then, I was pro I was, I'll just eat what I want. I was just mm. e eating what I want type thing, do you know what I mean? I didn't realise, nowadays though, I, I eat clean because it makes me feel better. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? It just does, doesn't it? Mm, so, yeah, but back then, I didn't really know a lot about the dieting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I knew like I knew bits and bobs because obviously my dad had the weightlifting gym. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. But I, right. I, I used to like, sometimes probably do the wrong diet, but I knew how to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But it was like, like right, carbs are bad if you want to lose weight. Do you know what I mean? Just loads of protein and stuff like that, the old bodybuilders sort of So, So mentality. where does it go then, Davey? Like when you... Obviously, you won that fight and that, you know, your mates come through to support you, a bit of a night out and all the rest of it. You've kind of proven to yourself, you know, I can, I can pull on a bit. I'm a bit of a scrub yeah. here. When does it start getting serious? When you think, actually, do you know what? Like, I could tap this a bit further here. You know what it is? It was... Or is that just you pushing yourself to, like, get into other, like, you know, other local shows and yeah, stuff like that? I mean, I think it's... I don't know. It was, like... Seeing a few, few lads, like... Seeing how big the UFC was getting... Do you know what I mean? And then one of my mates, Kurt, Kurt Warburton, he said, uh, he, like, he got to the UFC and stuff like that. And it was like, right, look, this is possible, like, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But uh, so I just kept on trying, then I kept on winning, then I turned pro, and then uh, I managed to get, like, my wife's dad, he came to watch one of my fights. And someone came over to the table afterwards. It was a great fight. I ended up stopping the ladder. I think I choked him out in the second round, but I nearly got knocked out in the first round. Know. You know what I mean? He got, like, hit bad. He had me rocked. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then came out in the second round and put it on him. I think I dropped him and choked him out. But uh, someone came to their our table. Obviously knew where, where my fans were. And this guy was like, he did me a massive favor. He went over to the table and he said, "Look, is this your husband?" Or like we weren't married back then. But my wife said, "Oh yeah." And he said, "Look," he said, "I'd love to sponsor him." And her dad was there. It was the first time he came to watch me fight. And he was like, "Oh, I'll sponsor him." And he it, it sort of like he was like, "Oh well, tell look, tell him I'll sponsor him because he had a good, really good business." Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So so he said, "Look," he said, "Tell him I'll sponsor him." And then he ended up just giving me a wage every week to Pretty to young. go and fight, and that helped out massively. Yeah, Do you know course, what I mean? So then it was like, right, okay, now I can just focus all my time. I didn't have to go to work. By then, I was a scaffolder. Mm -hmm. I was like um, just working on the building sites and stuff. So it was probably when I was about 22, 23 or something. Mm -hmm. And then, so then I had, then it was like, right, this is what I do. This, I, I'm just going to try my hardest. So from that point on, everything in my life was just focused on getting as as far as I could in fighting. Because I think, obviously, that's probably dropped, the pennies probably dropped for your lass's dad as well mm. at the time. Like, like you know, me daughter's fella. Yeah. You actually make money doing this fighting thing. Yeah, Because I think deep down, regardless, a lot of people don't understand the industry. Even in fitness, in the industry I'm in, like, people don't understand that you can make money from creating videos and yeah. people don't realise but once they say oh actually well you can do X, Y and Z mm. then they realise with with fighting it's the same thing like you know when you got your that opportunity off that fella and it was a strange it was just a, a nice bit of luck for you as well I suppose do you think that's what stops a lot of talented fighters breaking through because they don't have that ability to focus solely on the fighting because they, they, they're a scaffolder so they can't train or do you think that's an excuse do you think you can no, still make it regardless I, like? I think times have changed do you? definitely and I think you can you can like you can get everything you need on the night now type thing. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or in your hometown. You know, there's so many more coaches and MMA gyms available now where you can work and you can go and train a couple hours on the night. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you can get everything you need. Where I didn't feel like we had that back then. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Course, uh, right. It's like literally, if people come here, they can get everything. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. I'll, I'll cover the, I'll cover the strike and the S&C, the, the jiu-jitsu, the wrestling and then mix it all together for them. Do you know what I mean? Where back in the day when I was coming up, you, you couldn't get that. We had well, to travel even, all over. Obviously, SPG, Bishop Auckland, eh, mate? Like, obviously, this is your gym, Davey. And uh, I've been around a few different gyms, mm. and uh, it's an unbelievable facility. Yeah, so, cheers. like, I, I already know that, what it would feel like. Even in my head, I was like, imagine if I got in a scrap when I was younger, but I had this type of... Yeah. I'd, I'd, even being in this atmosphere, I'd want to be here. Yeah. And I think that helps bring people on Definitely. anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's the same as, again, in gyms. If you've got a great gym to go to, or whatever, you, you feel like you want to train hard 
Do you know what I mean? Mm. Do you think it's becoming like a lot more popular than what it was oh, then? Oh, definitely. Because obviously you were probably out of all your crew, you were like, you know, the, the lad who can scrap. Uh, but now do you feel like a lot more people are getting into it, yeah. even for the sake of getting into it? Definitely. I mean, nowadays, you know, like back in the day in, when we were in school and that, like people would have a reputation, like someone would have a reputation for being hard. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? And now it's like, look, that none of that makes a difference anymore. It's like either you can fight or not. Oh, You're yeah. a trained fighter, you know what I mean? No one's hard against a trained fighter. Yeah. You know, these people <laughs> who used to think they were hard in school, they just had a reputation because they beat someone up once. Or, oh, or, or yeah, got, yeah, do you no, know no, what no. I mean? Like, funny, and it? then, like, I've seen them people like that loads of times, and especially, like, then you get them in the gym, and it's like, oh, actually. So what do you think of that, then, Ray? Because it's an interesting one, that, because obviously there's loads of, every school's got hard men. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah. he's solid him, like, and, uh, and, like, do you actually believe that, there's no such thing unless you're a trained fighter. Yeah. You, you, you know, oh, you, definitely. You know there's what I mean? no such thing. Don't you mean? Don't get us wrong. You got people who are probably a bit harder in a scrap than than the normal person. Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? But then you put them up against a skilled fighter. It's like a fish out of water. Do you know what so I mean? So do you? Obviously, you've you've reached the level that you're at now, which we'll talk about. But do you? Obviously, since you turned pro and stuff, or not even since you turned pro, obviously, because ultimately, yes, you're a pro now. You're a trained fighter, but you've always still had that heart. So even mm. before you were a trained fighter you were still a fighter yeah so do you do you ever f- if you were in a situation in public and there was a lad and you knew he, he wasn't a trained fighter do you feel confident you could take anybody who wasn't <sighs> trained yeah yeah, yeah like uh, yeah I mean I, honestly I can't, I can't imagine there's I don't honestly don't care how they, well, I mean they, I just I don't there's no way they could beat me do you know what I mean like crazy, it, yeah it? it's I, like what about size and that look, like if you had some size, big look size can make it make a difference do you know what I mean but like but you put a little guy a little trained guy against a big guy and the little trained guy is going to win all day mm-hmm. do you know what I mean yeah but like you put a little guy a little trained guy against a big trained guy and chances are the big guy is going to win do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I get that. But so like, the training always... Yeah. yeah. But like, but, the, but there's also, you've got, everyone's got a puncher's chance as well. But mate, most people, like, if, they, if they've never been taught how to throw a punch, can't throw one. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, or yeah. not one, like, with enough sort of venom in it, with, an, with the right sort of timing, and enough smoke and mirrors in front of it that are actually going to catch someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, that, like, like, it's even someone who, who maybe th- thinks that they can throw a punch. Well, then you've got to be able to throw it without me noticing that what's coming. So I'll, because I'll just counteract it. Did it ever go against you? Like, did you ever find that you got into tangles outside the MMA world no. because people thought I'll nah, have a gun? No, the other way around, really. Was it? Yeah, you stayed away I, from I, you. Wait, I, I don't even think it was that. I think maybe it's, it was probably more just the fact that I'm a nice guy, and. I, I don't think I look like someone who wants trouble. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think yeah, if, you, if you see me out, it, like, regardless of that, maybe the cauliflower ears probably give it away. But right. like, if you saw me out, no one would think, oh, I'm going to test myself against him. I just look like a little divvy. <laughs> Do uh, you know what I mean? It's that's like, one thing. It's like the collie ears for me, that's one thing. If I saw a bloke in a bar right. with collie ears, regardless how big I was compared to him, yeah, I'm not trying to. Definitely, any definitely. You know what I mean? think, yeah, I think uh, it probably is a good bit of information for anyone. If you do see anyone, <laughs> maybe don't pick that one to fight if you are looking for a fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Turn and pro, Davy. What was that like? Um, just off the cuff, really. Honest. Promoter said, oh, your, your opponent's pulled out. I don't know, he had like maybe six amateur fights, five, six amateur fights. Uh, and the promoter said, oh, your guy's pulled out. Do you want to fight a weight above and pro? I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Didn't even think about it. Because at that point, I was just like thinking, well, I was, yeah, I'll, I'll just fight anyone. I just wanted to fight, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then I got beat my first pro fight. Right. I was gutted. Got really controlled, bad. And again, just... So said right that's it with MMA I said I'm not doing it no more I said I only want to do this if I'm going to, if I'm going to be the best in the world like and it, it just so I just started doing Thai boxing I was thinking I'll just do Thai where they can't take me down <laughs> do you know what I mean and uh, just started fighting Thai boxing for ages mm. did, did like went to Thailand for for pro over there and uh, and then I got back I think I had another fight in England I can't remember if it was before or after and then the promoter said look there's been a dropout on a one of our cards for a four-man tournament and you get to fight twice in one night and you win a grand. Do you know what I mean? I was like, ah, go on then, I'll, I'll, I'll give it another go. Do you know what I mean? Right. And then I fought on that. I just, I was just excited. I thought, two fights in one night, sounds hard, that. Do you know what I mean? Fucking so it just, sort of, just sort of like, it excited me. Mm-hmm. And then I went and won that. And then uh, I think I won about another 10 fights after that. And by then I was in the UFC. That's fucking mad. Do you never get scared? 
Like, uh, like, two, like for you saying there, two fights in one night, that's exciting for me. Mm. Fuck me, mate. I couldn't think of that worse. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. think of that worse than one fight in a week. <laughs> so like two fights. What is it about that? Is it, is, it, is it the competitive side where you're like, I've got a chance to prove myself twice? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, just do, it. I like th- challenges, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, and it just, it just sounded cool. Do you, have you ever been scared in a fight? Have you ever been walking in and thinking, shit, like, I'm actually... And I know you're not going to admit it because it's not a good mindset to have when no, you're fighting it's someone. No, like, uh, like, I don't mind admitting anything, me. And I'm like, but, okay, uh, then, do you, yeah. do you ever feel like you... I'm going to lose against this bloke here? Like, mm. I've got an A chance here. Nah, no. I've, never, I've never felt that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that would be a bad mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know what I mean? I've never fought anyone who I thought I've got no chance to beat. Do but you know for I mean? me, like, because I, I, what I'm trying to dig at, Davey, is like, I know everyone is going to, if you're a fighter, you need to have the positive mindset. You've, you've got to say, I'm, I'm good enough to beat anybody mm. in the world. And I get that. But we're still human. Yeah. And I just want to know, truthfully, do you ever feel like, regardless of what you tell yourself, like, yeah. I'm going to fucking lose today? No, I'm, no, it's no. like, but it is, it's like, it's not like, oh, oh I'm going to lose. It's like, I possibly could lose here if I'm not on my game. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, or yeah. like, oh, right, this lad's knocked a lot out. Mm-hmm. I know it's hard, do you know what I mean? Uh, I've had that a few times. And once, there was one fight as well where my head went bad, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, before the fight? Mm, only time it's ever happened. What happened? I'd, for the training camps, I had nine weeks to find out about the fight. To, and I was fighting uh, in the UFC. And I, I think I trained maybe properly for about two maybe one week of the whole camp it was just injury it cut injury it was like honestly my ribs went i cut my eye my, my shoulder went my wrist went everything and i didn't hardly strain and uh i just didn't i didn't feel like I, i'd done enough do you know what i mean and i had i was i was with a sports psych guy that when i used to use the sports psych guys and all that and, and i was like looking to him for a pep talk to like thing me but open and he's like look you know you and then in my own head i was thinking i haven't done the work i haven't done the work here yeah. and then in the change room i just uh I don't know, I just felt flat going out. Like, I was walking out in front of thousands of fans in the Manchester, uh, in the MEN arena, mm-hmm. and uh, it just felt like I was walking in the park and I had no adrenaline, just the zap had went. But it was weird as, as well because I ended up getting beat that fight. But I, sm- I beat them up for probably two and a half rounds and then got armbar just about a minute from the end. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just didn't feel confident at all. It was weird, very, very do think, weird. Do you think that's what contributed to the loss? Um, or do you think it's just because he got you in the armbar? It, it and definitely, I could have been better. If I'd like, it, I, I, the same guy, skill set for skill set, I'd smash him. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was better, loads better at me than Jiu Jitsu, though. Do you know what I mean? But I feel like my wrestling was good enough. I didn't even have to go to the floor with him in the third round. Mm-hmm. I just felt him crumble in front of me because he couldn't get me took down. I thought, right, I'm going to knock you out now. So mm-hmm. I went into his guard thinking he was done. And then I just like pulled my arm back and he just whipped a really good armbar on. But uh, I think the factor of that was as well. It was a weird one because I was fighting at half two in the morning. Right, okay. And I've had it happen before when I've been on them late fights. Do you know what I mean? Where like, I'll put two, uh, in the warm up, I'm, I'm feeling proper sharp and then boom, it just goes. The zap goes. Just, li- like, just yeah, tiredness li- of the, the time of the I night I think so. As well. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or maybe an adrenaline dump or what? I don't know. But like, I've learned from it and I know how to sort of counteract it a bit better now. But those late, late fights, I don't like them. So obviously, Davey, again, it's back to that. You're a lad from the northeast, right? And it's cl- ah, look, I get a fucking buzz, you know, when I meet anybody who's day in summit. Um, and you've made it the UFC. It's literally the dream for anybody who's even thinking about MMA, never mind actually doing it for a living yeah. and getting sponsored and going through the heartache of losing and all that shit. And the fact that, you you know, you, you're taking a lot of damage to your body and stuff. You've got to the pinnacle of, of the world in terms of this sport. Um did your life change? And what was it like actually getting a deal with the UFC? Mine was crazy because, like, I got into the Ultimate Fighter, so straight away you're on, like, a series, television mm-hmm. series, you know what I mean? And everyone in, in England could watch it when it was on and all that, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, like, my life sort of blew up a bit. Did you get recognised in that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was just, like, well, it was, like, pretty crazy for me, do you know what I mean? Like, going to the Metro Centre and people coming over, well, Ryan, can I get a picture? And this was, if it did, it, it was nowhere near back then as what it is now either. Yeah, exactly. You know, like this is going back 10 years now. Mm-hmm. So the sports snowballed massively since then with all Conor McGregor and all that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it still used to happen. And then after I got signed for the UFC, I had like, I got beat in the Ultimate 
fighter finale, so I like, came second, I was gutted about that. And then when I got signed for a fight in London, I got injured. And then I, I got injured and a surgery, and then injured in a surgery, and then a neck injury, and it kept me out for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So the MMA world didn't have a clue who I was in again. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like that. Yeah, it's like yeah. that. We know, like, everyone's yeah, yeah, totally. onto the next top prospect. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I couldn't, like, keep that ball rolling. So then it was just like, I was just forgot about it again. When you when you first got signed, obviously you'll have got cash and stuff as well. Did mm -hmm. that change you? Because obviously coming no. from a lad who didn't have a lot of money, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what was that like? Or were you just nah, like, it is what it is? Honestly, I mean, I, I like, I'm, I'm, I've always stayed the same. I always like, uh, I make people say, oh, you're so humble. I don't even look at it being humble. I'm not humble about anything. I'm just the same. I don't understand, like, you know, like, People are like, oh, you've never changed. I'm like, nah, it's, it makes no difference. It's mm -hmm. still the same person. If you don't know by now, I run a business called The Content PT. I create content for influencers, PTs, online coaches, and fitness brands all around the world. So if you are someone who's in need for sexy content for your social media, or you really want to maintain a competitive edge in your industry, drop me a DM on Instagram. How, do you know how what does mean? it happen, Davey, when you actually get signed? What What's the procedure? Like, what happens? So Do they just... Get in touch with you and say, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it can happen a few different ways, you mm -hmm. know, like either like Dana came and told me mm -hmm. uh, personally in the change room after I lost the fight. Mm -hmm. um, what did he say? What was that just, conversation with Dana just, White like? He just came in, he like, he, he doesn't like uh, usually do this and he just came in after the fight. I was good that I didn't even stay in the cage for the fucking, uh, for, for the decision, do you know what I mean? Because I got beat, I got tapped out, mm -hmm. beat, I beat off the better guy. I mean, I was absolutely gutted and I went back to the change room and was crying, I was just couldn't believe it, you know what I mean? And uh, Dana came in, he said, look, he said, you're still going to get your shot. He said, it was a great fight, man. He just sort of like, gave us a pat on the back and said, look, everything's going to be all right, you know what I mean? Okay, uh, what was that like? just came into consolers. I was like, I was, I was still good, but buzzing, do you know ah, what I mean? Yeah, I get that. And Bit then I was sweet, just, it? yeah, it was crazy. It was just, um, so that's how it happened for me. Other people, it could be coming through the manager or you could go on Dana White's Contender Series mm -hmm. or like the ultimate fighter. What's he fight, like? Eh? What's he like? What's Dana like? As sound. A person? Honestly, he? God, he's sound as out. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I've never got a bad word to say about him. He's always looked after me. Was it, were you like starstruck by him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was starstruck by loads of people I've seen in the UFC. Mm -hmm. Still am. <laughs> what I mean? Who, who, who's the type of people that, you, that have kind of blew you away? Like, because obviously, um, you'll have, I imagine you'll have met them all, but uh, obviously being who you are, like, have you been recognised by people who you thought, fucking, I can't believe they know who oh, I am? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, what, that's nice. That like? That's nice. It's sometimes I'll be in the, in the Performance Institute and, like, just people have, like, a few different people, like, famous people and that come and, like, said hello and stuff like that. And, uh... Like who? I, I want to know some... Mate, like, I, I don't know. I remember, like, there was a few. There's, uh... I can't think off the top of my head. It's happened so many times. Um, but like the fighter side of things, on the fighter side of things, like they'd even come over and be like, oh, I love it when you do that switch hook. And like, and then they like try and get my breakdown of it. Yeah, and I'm yeah, thinking, yeah. wow, these are guys I massively respect. And like, I didn't even think would know who I am. And they're asking me about how, what these techniques, what I do in fights and stuff. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Unbelievable, that like. Yeah, it? it's, it's crazy. When you're training and you're kind of coming up with different techniques and stuff like that, do you have, do you try and apply things that you've seen personally or is it all about like what the coach teaches you? You know, if you've saw something, like say, say you're watching a fight yourself, yeah. and I like the way you've done that. Mm. I, I want to try that. Or, or is it, is it one of them where it's, no, that's not my style. I would never try and do yeah, that. Yeah, no, I think it's a, it's, it's a bit of both. You know, like sometimes I, I see things or get taught things and then I'll just adapt it. You know, like I'll just get it to suit me. And I try and tell that to all my guys as well. I'm like, mm -hmm. look, everything I'm giving you, my coach Carl used to say, like, you just, if, if, if you treat your fight like a blank canvas and you just chuck a load of shit at it and then some of it's going to fall off and some of it's going to stick. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like what you've got to do is you just got to take what's, what, what's good for you and then you can sort of disregard anything else. But it's mm -hmm. always nice to know everything anyway yeah. just because even like I, I always tell the guys in jiu-jitsu, it's like, look, if you know something, even if you don't want to use it, at least you can recognize it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And then if someone tries to do it on you, you know what's coming, or you can sort of reverse engineer things like that. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. Like, it's one of them, isn't it, where it is like a cocktail, and so you've got to kind yeah. of prepare for every yeah, eventuality. Yeah, definitely, and, every, like. and everyone's totally different. What works for me might work, might not work for you, but it might work good against you, or like, you know, it's like, like, like MMA math doesn't work out just because he beats him, he doesn't beat him and all that. Do you know what I mean? Do you, do you pinch yourself? Like, obviously, traveling the world and trained in all these fancy locations and lived there for eight weeks and then mm. being in wherever it was. Like, is that, do, do you, does it ever hit home? Like, do you ever take a minute and think, fucking hell, I'm just laughing, yeah, Bishop? Yeah, all time. Honest to God, I just thank me lucky stars. 
Uh, I'm so, I'm, I'll be forever grateful for the life I managed to live. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's uh, and like uh, don't get us wrong. It's a lot of hard work and that that's got us there. It hasn't just been given. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't just some some sort of like lucky break. Do you know what I mean? It's hours and hours sweat and blood in the gym. Do you know what I mean? Where, but. Uh, honest, I absolutely thank we lucky stars because the, the thing we're fighting is as well as the game of millimeters and split seconds, and it yeah. could have been massively different. Do you know yeah, what I mean? And I know that is. just by I, I should have zigged in, uh, and I zagged type thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You never know. And then that's that. So one every chance. opportunity you've just exactly. took the right. Yeah, and it's yeah. I've, so it's obviously there's definitely a bit of luck in there, and and it's yeah. I thank we lucky stars. Honest, I really do. Do you think for someone, I know we mentioned it off off camera, but do you think for someone to kind of make their name in the sport, do you think they've got to be a bit McGregor-esque? Do you think they've got it's to be a bit way. of a guy? It definitely helps. You've got to build your business as a brand. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was I, I sort of got in there and just did I'd do me talk through me fighting. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a pretty exciting fighting style. I'm not really the type of person to, to, to talk much shit and all that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it makes it so you, I feel like you have to be better. Than, yeah. than someone who can who, who's got the gift of the gab type. Who do thing. you look up to though? Like who? Which fighter do you think? I he's got the like that. That he's doing it right, or is it just you? Don't, I, you I don't used to like that. GSP. Right. Okay. You know, GSP was mm -hmm. a big, big uh, very, very big influ influence on me. Um, I just liked the way he went on. Like he's. I love the way all of them go on though. Do you know what I mean? I like yeah. the, the the Diaz brothers, the way they do, just don't give a fuck. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I like Connor, the way that he sells himself. And like I, I really, really like it, but but it's not me. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I Whereas GSP that. was a bit more like me. He likes to just keep out the shit talk and do his fighting and like pre present himself as like he's a good role model. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, like I'm a dad, that. that's my main yeah, job. Yeah, I get do you know that. what I mean? Like um, my main job is to be a dad. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So like so I like to, to promote myself the way I want my kids to see me or the way I want my yeah, kids to be able when they get like, older, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Where I could like go and be totally different, but it's it's not being a good role model to the people who I love. I I, I appreciate that, mate, because I'm a dad as well. Mm. I've got a little two-year-old and uh, I've, I've had opportunities to do things, even with a podcast, mate, or in business ventures and stuff. And it's been like, you would maybe have to take on this persona to do that. Yeah. And it's almost like, nah, I can't. Well, that's Although it. it would come with nice money and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and followings and all that type of shit. But at the same time, I've got to understand that there's someone that's going to watch everything yeah, I've exactly. I do. Well, that's what I, I thought. And, I'm, what and I mean? I've always been very careful about the things what I, what I say and I do. Because on the internet, it's going to live forever. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And I don't, I, I want to, I want to try and promote myself how I tell the, 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 those kids to act. You know, I don't, that's, that's my main job in life now. You know what I mean? Fighting's brilliant, but it's mm -hmm. not my main job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dad's your main job. Yeah. What are all these characters like? In, have you met them all, McGregor's? And the yeah, they're all brothers? sound. Honestly, all you sound? meet anyone in the gym, especially an MMA gym. Mm -hmm. An MMA gym, you don't get many dickheads. Mm -hmm. Everyone's sound because they've, they've, especially if they've, they've been there for a while, you've been humbled. You yeah. have been, you know what I mean? You've been tied up by some little skinny guy and he's only alive now because he let go. Yeah. It's very humble in that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like everyone sort of knocks the chip straight off the shoulder mm -hmm. and everyone in the in the MMA gym world is usually, uh, I always find that everyone's fucking sound as fuck like. Have you rolled with any of these guys? Uh, like like uh, any any of, the, any of these guys, like the McGregors, the Diaz, uh, any of these? No, I've, I've never trained with McGregor. Uh -huh. I know he's coach John. Yeah, he's yeah. coach John. I've trained with him. He's, he's brilliant. Like, um, I've trained with like Diaz. Mm -hmm. I went over and I trained with Nate and Nick Diaz for a bit. Mm -hmm. I went to Stockton. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lodi, and uh, we were just training because one of my friends knows them. So I went over and did like a training thing. Mm -hmm. So I was with all those, training like with like Ronda Rousey when I was in the in the, in the the Ultimate Fighter house and stuff like that. And mental that. And then I've got like, there's been loads of different times that I've trained with like guys in Vegas and I went to Gilbert Melendez's gym. And yeah, I've, I've just been about a bit. Because the reason I ask it is because Obviously, these guys, yeah, the, the fighters and the people who you respect and look up to and, and all that type of stuff, and I'm, and I'm sure they do with you as well because, again, you're a fighter in your own right and you've achieved great things, mate. Like, does do you feel a different way when you meet these people or is the, are they just another fighter because they're living your journey or is it like, fuck, yeah. I'm, I've, I've got to act a certain way because yeah, no, they're mean, a brand now. They're not just yeah, fighters, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. Nah, like, everyone, everyone seems to be uh, all right. And like sometimes I, I get massively starstruck when I meet people and that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like when I first met Bispin, mm -hmm. I remember that. And like, 
when I like when I first saw Connor, when I, like uh, I went on a, on a boat trip, you know, Donald Cerrone, and oh, we yeah, were on yeah. like because uh, Donald Donald he fetches all his toys to the PI, you know, like he's always going out on his motorbikes or he's got a, a boat and we were going like wakeboarding on his boat and the guy who was there and that and all you know. there was loads of these like you know Daniel Rodriguez all we were just mental, we were just going about the the lakes in Vegas on on a boat wakeboarding and stuff, do you know what I mean? <laughs> And I was just like, oh, wow, this is mental. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I, it's weird because I feel like the way I'm sure that people sometimes feel like that when they meet me. Yeah, I don't feel it myself though, because it feels different for me when I meet other people. I'm like starstruck. I never feel like anyone's starstruck to meet me, but I'm, I, there I, will I'm, be, I'm, though, I'm sure it would happen. Ah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Will, of but will. yeah, it's, uh, ah, it's crazy. What do you think of, you mentioned Nganu there, what do you think of the whole crossover boxing scene? And do you think it's good? Yeah, I've asked I mean, a few people this. It's not look, I, honest. I hate it when people say it's ruining boxing and this and that's like, look, boxing's still boxing. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's just another form of entertainment. It's like, look, it's all about numbers. You know, and loads of people want to see Jake Paul fight because he's got a following, mm -hmm. so he can go and make he can go and make these fights. You know what I mean? Like, just let him get on, feed his family, and make money. It's up to him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, how's that ruining boxing? You know, like boxing's you've got your boxing, you've got your YouTube boxing, you've got your crossover boxing. It's all just entertainment. Who, yeah. who, who who's anyone to say that no one's allowed to go and put entertainment on what they're going to make money off? It's fair. I don't. I don't. Isn't it? It's just different. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like saying, oh, Thai boxing ruining boxing because they throw kicks. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Aye, it's that's, not. That's a good it's point. Like, just, it's not. Do you know what I mean? How would you feel if a shitload of boxers just started fucking jumping in cages? Fucking and brilliant. Would you love it? Fetch them over, do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> It's never going to fare, is it, though? No, boxers never going to stand boxing, up again. Because, like, a lot of our sport is not a part of their sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, but, but a lot of our sport is a part of their sport. Do yeah, you know what I mean? That. So, like, you can get an MMA guy can hang with some boxers, do you know what I mean? Like, you put me in a, in, in a ring against... The best MMA fighters in my division in the world, and I'll hang with them, no problem at all. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and like, and I, I think I can go and beat anyone on my day in my division in MMA. But you put me with the best boxers in the world in a boxing fight, I'm I'm getting beat up bad. Yeah, and it's the same the other way around, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's all. And he, ten it's times even worse, worse isn't it? ten uh, times worse. But it's different sports. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like. It's like just because one's a high level athlete in one, obviously, there they can take a little bit from it. Do you know what I mean? But you're not going to go and see like a, a top baseball player any good in the NBA. Do you yeah, know what I mean? It's a different sport yeah. altogether. How much does that mean to you? I know you mentioned being a dad, um, and obviously, that's your job, that's your duty, that's what, you, that's what you're doing. How many kids you got? Three. You got three kids. Mm. How old are they? 14, Jay, he's my oldest. Yeah. And then me. Middle one, that's Nate, and he's 12. And then so I've you got were a kind of young dad, weren't you? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it was about 23 when I was how, here. How did you sort of interweave having a children and fighting? I just had a good, good wife. Is suppose. that what it was? Yeah, she used to sort of just... Uh, she, she still does, you know what I mean? She just holds the house together. So has there ever been times when she's... I'm not saying doubted you, but like, oh, Dave, are you going to fighting maybe it's just not the right thing to do now. no like, nah, no she's it's never always, been that. Well, except for when I first started she just didn't th think I could do it do you know what I mean yeah but then. do you think that was because you weren't making money doing it because I think when someone's not making money and I think that that's a it's a good thing and it's a bad thing because I feel like when someone's not making money belief isn't there because it's like well yeah. why would you just keep fighting and fucking risking your life yeah. if you're not making money but once you start making money be like actually you know what you can provide a life now you can actually yeah, do this yeah that's it she just knew what was following me dream do you know what I mean mm -hmm. and like and, and, and she knew what would be there at the end of it and She's always been 100% supportive, you know, like all the way through my fight camps and, and everything, you know, like I'll just take off a lever with three kids and go to Vegas or whatever, do you know what I mean? And she just gets on with it and she runs her own business herself, so. It's unbelievable, that. I think yeah. I think you need oh, that. Like. She, yeah, she's uh, she's been me rock all the way from the start, you know what I mean? That's unreal. I've got very, very similar support network in that respect. Like I'm very lucky, even like doing a podcast, this podcast makes me no money at all. Yeah. But to be able to do this and take a day off work to come and, do these yeah. type of things, you know what I mean? It's like, I think you need that. I think if I was kind of with anybody else, it wouldn't work. Yeah. You need someone who yeah, understands definitely. that. So it's like, it's nice that you've got that made. With your kids, would you would you ever encourage them to get into this? They've already had fights. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, my little girl, Heidi, she's only five. Mm -hmm. She like, she does the training. You know what I mean? She's she's not too keen on wearing gloves because they make a hand sweat. She's a very, very girly girl. Right. I thought with having two older brothers, she might be a bit of a tomboy or something. Right. Not at all. No. She's uh, She likes fully dresses and princesses. But uh -huh. she comes to the gym and she enjoys it. She gets a little tie box and shorts on. And she'll come over. She's like, Dad, is it all right? But I just call bare knuckle. 
Because she just doesn't like to wear the gloves, do you know what I mean? But like the boys, like our Jay's had MMA fights, our Nate's had, hasn't had an, a proper MMA fight, he's just had Thai boxing fights. And uh, Jay's had Thai boxing fights as well, and they do like into clubs and stuff like that. But they both into football as well. Mm -hmm. And Heidi does, she trains in the kickboxing, little kids kickboxing class I do here, but then she also does like dancing and gymnastics as well. Do you see similarities in your lads that you had? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. can you... Like, how are you as a dad in that respect? Like, are you are you very? I know that you would have liked maybe he's a bit more pushed than what you are. Are you mm. quite pushy? Do you are you like stick at it, or are you like a realist in the sense of like, no, you're not that good. No, I'm like I, I like sort of like let them do. I, I, I encourage them to do anything mm -hmm. except go and hang about the streets or sit on the computers. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, uh, like so I want them to play football. Uh, like I've had, I, Nate used to play rugby. Jay, I used to coach Jay's football team right, for okay. years. From when know. he was about five till he was about 14. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and obviously getting them in the gym all the time. I, I've never really had to tell them to come up to the gym. They've always wanted to anyway. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But sometimes, oh, I want to play out. Like, no, oh, well, come on, let's come to the gym. I'm not forcing them. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, no, I'm definitely, I'm going, I'm, all right, okay, go out and play, but. Like, then the next time, I'm like, oh, you didn't go on Tuesday. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I just try and edge them into it just because yeah. I know it's good for them. You know what I mean? Where kids, sometimes kids, they're too busy knowing what they want to do and they say they don't want to go to the gym, but then when they get there, they like it. Yeah, type I, thing. I, it's because, oh, well, they've got something in front of them, a computer or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like the th thought of going to the gym. And it's not, not I'm not forcing them. But I'm just, just edging them nudge. into it. Yeah, 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 do you know what I mean? It's good that. Yeah, I think yeah, like a lot of parents will have to do that. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, uh, but you know, yeah, you know, you just know what's what's good. I think for them. it's. I didn't have that. I I didn't have anyone, me mum or dad, telling me to like do this or mm. do that. I mean, I think I think the closest thing I got to that was like playing the guitar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like learning at the when I was younger, and then mm. kind of jacking it in, thinking it's, I'm not good enough. Yeah, and all that, and that yeah. type of stuff kicks in. But I think kind of you do things in this life out of like desperation or yeah. motivation really yeah, it? Like, yeah. you either want to do something to achieve something or you're like fuck I don't know what else to do like what yeah. would you do now if you didn't have this <sighs> I dread to think honest to God crazy, I it? dread to think uh, do you think like, you could have ever went down the wrong path in life or were you not on that type of <laughs> thing anyway definitely yeah definitely yeah uh, <laughs> yeah I like that I think it would probably saved me in a lot of ways unbelievable man do you did, have you ever experienced any jealousy that's came with your success or any... Or ah, like maybe bits and bobs, you know what I mean? I think every, everyone gets, like, jealous of people. Like, I get jealous of people. Like, it, it's weird in a way because, like, I don't know, especially with the social media mm -hmm. at the minute and, like, it's maybe it's not, like, jealous of them but wanting what they've got, you know what I mean? Or, yeah. like, someone's, oh, God, are they on holiday? Oh, man, I want that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I, I think it's just natural. It's naturally... I think it's natural in... Just in humans anyway isn't it you know what I mean yeah, to be jealous that. of things do you like, think it's good oh, though what? I don't know like, social media do you think social media is good look it's, it's, there's, it's good and bad mm -hmm. do you know what I mean there's loads of great points about social media and then there's loads of bad points mm -hmm. do you know what I mean it's like yeah it keeps people maybe connected a bit more or like I don't know say you, everyone knows about a lot more what's happening now you don't have to run about doing flyers or like for events and things like that no it's a great way to go and connect with people on a, on a bigger level uh, a lot easier but then obviously you've got Cyber bullying, and you've got like uh, people like posting things just like giving the best bits of the life, and it makes everyone feel like everyone's still going through the same shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But then you think, oh, fucking hell, well, his life's brilliant, and mine isn't because he's posted a picture here, there, and everywhere, or he's driving this car or whatever. Right. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, you didn't yeah, get as much of that before, but mm -hmm. then there's loads of good things what you can like, I don't know, so just like learning about people's journeys you know like well, i don't know like it's it's, it's i think it's just it, it's both you know yeah, what i mean 100%. I, I i'm a massive fan of social media uh, yeah for the simple fact that everyone's got the option to not have it yeah i think there's that's that it. and i don't think that gets spoken about enough i, th I think if, you, you know what i mean you don't need to have social do you if i i, I feel like i need to mm -hmm. uh but i'd rather not yeah. i'd much rather not that's a common i'm, answer I'm that, still you know? a bit I, i'm still a bit a bit old school me though yeah, yeah. do you know what i mean well, like, uh, it, I like, I feel like I need it for uh, for gym and business and things like that, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'd much rather, I, I'd rather I didn't. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I like to, I, like a lot of the time, 
I'm terrible at getting back to people on social media. Uh, not through ignorance, just because I'd knock my notifications off from like Instagram, Facebook. I, won't, I haven't got Snapchat or TikTok or anything. Yeah, when yeah. Snapchat came out, I was already like, I have got enough social medias that I need to attend to yeah. without having another one. And That's everyone's on Snapchat. Right. And I thought, I don't want it because it's just more time, eating more time out my day on an already busy schedule. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? So I knock my notifications off so I won't see messages come through because I'll end up doing that. And then this, this, this. And then before you know it, you've spent half an hour scrolling through. You know what I mean? So, with with obviously uh, moving forward, Davey, what's what's the future looking like for for yourself? Obviously, you've got a couple of fights left for the UFC, haven't you? A couple of fights in the, on this contract. Yeah. Hopefully, get another contract. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you want to be fighting for much longer? I'll fight as long as I can. Will you? As long until I feel like I'm getting worse, or till I feel like I can no longer hang with the best guys in the world, then that's probably time. You know what I mean? I don't. I wouldn't want to like just keep turning up and get beat. Yeah, no way we're too competitive for that mm -hmm. do you know what I mean when I feel like biologically I've just slowed down so I can't compete anymore I feel like that would be the time to wrap it in have you got anything else in the pipeline no honest I mean I've thought about the bare knuckle boxing and stuff after that mm -hmm. uh, I think it would suit me I think it would be uh, like a lot of, a lot of ten people tend to go for, or there's been a few go from that when they've sort of finished the UFC careers mm -hmm. so that, that could be a possibility mm -hmm. uh, and really just sort of, honestly just sort of settle down just with my family maybe a few different business ideas like towards like the I don't know maybe property and things like that but honestly just coaching will be the main thing that's where I'll get all my sort of adrenaline rushes from do you know what I mean so obviously not, that's a big thing that you're doing at the moment you, you're actually coaching now and like, yeah. it's mad to say the fact that you have got you know a contract with the UFC and you're still and you're coaching people you're in the gym you're, you're relentless about it Yeah. obviously you've got a big belief in the people who you're training and stuff like that what type of things do you identify you know what I mean like when someone comes in the gym do you know instantly like they could do well or is it a case of we've no. just got to work with this guy no, for a long no, time no no like honestly everyone in my gym will get the same treatment Mm -hmm. um, whether they walk in and, and they've never fought a day in their life or they come in and they're a seasoned pro mm -hmm. do you know what I mean I, I, I really make it my business because I, I just like it, this training to a lot of people it's not like oh I'm training to be the best fighter in the world a lot of them are just training because it might help them just like to keep fit or I think it's great for people's mental health or it's a bit more like a sort of like therapy or a social club to a lot yeah, of people just like community, isn't it? do you know what I mean yeah so I think I think that's the best thing do you know what I mean Definitely, it's. Do you get do you get many lads who come in the gym though and like give it the big one? You know what I mean? Who yeah, think they're sometimes. Like, how do you how do you kind of disarm? Like how do you kind of sort that situation out? Is it a case of you're not welcome to train here, or we're gonna nah, humble I've you? I've never really kicked anyone out of the gym. Have you not? No, no. So you just give them a good eye until the. Uh, uh, sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. it happens like that. I, I, try, I try not to. Do you know what I mean? But <laughs> sometimes. Like, <laughs> but it's like uh, I don't know. It's weird because. If I had people like that in the gym, it would have a knock-on effect. Yeah, but the way that it. I bring my guys on, everyone, like, I tell everyone, look inspiring. Like, if you don't recognize someone, you don't go hard. You know what I mean? And then, like, you'll pick it up as and when type thing. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? All my guys know if someone walks in and, and they're new, then none of us will go hard. And, and then if they start going a bit harder, then, okay, then now you can pick it up a bit type thing. Do you know yeah, what I mean? That's fair it's enough. like there's that mutual respect. Yeah. And then it, if, if someone I feel is going way hard and I don't know them, but they're trying to be a dick, then they'll get told. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, but I like to say, look, you just stay... If it, unless it's not fight rounds. That's different when the lads have got fights coming up. And you need to go and put it on people. Do you know what I mean? Um, not to the point where we're knocking people out and cutting them open and stuff, but... Uh, it's got to be a lot harder rounds. Yeah, do you know what course. I mean? Because you've got a fight coming up. It's yeah, very important. Exactly. But when it's mm -hmm. not, then uh, just stay like, I don't expect you to lose any rounds, but just stay one gear above. Do you know what I mean? Like if I'm sparring, I, I won't let people win rounds against me, mm -hmm. but I'll stay one gear above when I could go three, four, five, six. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but then exactly. it's, so you kind of know, you're geared. Do you know, yeah, just yeah. like, you can still win the round. Do you know what I mean? But you don't have to beat people up. Do you think, do you think most people who come into your gym want to be a fighter? Or do you think they come to just train? Uh, I don't know. I think a lot is, of people... Is, there not, is that never talked about? Is it, yeah, I just want to come down and... Well, yeah, I mean, but look, honestly, it's, it's people can just turn up and some of them have got no no plans of being or ever having a fight and then it changes. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then the it totally changes and then they're like, wow, you know, I go on then. I, f I feel you know, just a bit more confidence and like uh, confidence and technique. And then they think, ah, oh, go on then, I'll do this. And they realise like, oh, I'm actually all right at this. And I like that. I think it's, I want it to be a place for everyone. Yeah, not just like, I love that life. Yeah, definitely. Davey, 
Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for coming. No, on the show, no worries. Mate. I could, mate, you, you, again, I could chat you. Yeah, no, hours, definitely. But, uh, I no, want to just say thank us. you, mate. It's appreciated. Cheers for your time. Yeah, cheers, cheers buddy. Mate. Thank thanks you, mate. For the-